Hi everybody and welcome to my newest fly tying tutorial. The pattern I'm going to tie today is called Anderson's Birds of Prey Caddis. Here's a look at John Anderson's pattern. Uh, John Anderson is a guy, I believe, from uh, Western United States, I believe California. He created this pattern and it's meant to imitate the caddis pupa and the caddis emerger. Um, I like tying this um, in, for Eastern United States between sizes uh, 12 to 20. I'm going to be using a hook put out by Allen Fly Fishing, and this is their N204BL. BL just means that it's a barbless hook. So it's a nice caddis pupa hook. It gives really great dimensions. But the one thing to keep in mind with this hook is that it's a 2X wide, 2X short, thin wire hook. Being that it's 2X short, you can get away with putting um, smaller size flies on larger hooks. Uh, so for instance, this I'm going to be tying, I believe, on a size 12 hook. But this is going to look more like a size 14 in the water because of that two extra short. So keep that in mind whenever you're tying with these hooks. This is a look at the tan uh, Birds of Prey caddis, and I'll talk about all the materials as I'm tying those. So let me get this one out of the vise and begin tying this pattern. All right, the first thing we have is the, uh, the N204 BL hook. I have a tungsten bead at the, the front, and that's all I'm going to do for the weight. I'm going to be using some ADOT brown thread. It's a dark brown thread, and I'm using the dark brown thread. Um, I, I, I kind of vary between dark brown thread and black because the head of this fly does have some peacock curl. So you may want to consider um, going straight black because you're going to be finishing it with a very dark head. For the tail, uh, John Anderson recommends using mallard. I am going to use Hungarian partridge instead. Let me show you a quick peek at a, a skin. I'm going to be using some of this darker color right in the middle going down the back. Not necessarily the lighter one that you may see on a lot of other patterns. So instead I'm going to be using some of this darker stuff. I pulled a feather already. This is the, the feather that I used. And it's just a little bit darker. I'll zoom in so you can take a peek at it. Being that it's darker and I'm going to be tying a dark brown Birds of Prey caddis, I wanted something with just a little bit more dark modeling. So I've advanced my thread the whole way to the back, just above the bend. I'm going to pull about five or six fibers out of this. After I have the fibers, I'm just going to clump them together. I don't. I want them just a little less than the length of the hook shank. Shank, and again, that hook shank is a little shorter. So keep that in mind. I prefer putting on just a shorter tail on this. So I'm just going to put those in with a couple locking wraps. I don't have to worry too much about anything else there. I trim that away. Next, I'm going to tie in the ribbing. John Anderson recommends Pearl Flashaboo. I'm actually going to use a little bit of Pearl Crystal Flash instead. I just like the, the ribbing look that it gives. Uh, it doesn't matter exactly how you tie this in, as long as you just lock it in. I'm just going to bring my thread up, lock everything in, pull it tight, and bring my thread right back to my tail. Next, I'm going to use some dark brown dubbing. For the October caddis, you can look. You can use something a little bit more orange. Uh, for the tan caddis, just a tan. I'm going to go with a little bit darker of a look for this pattern. Let me get some dubbing put on here. I do want to taper, but I don't want to go ex extremely aggressive with that taper. So I'm going to start it a little bit finer near the near um, the back or the beginning of my thread, and I will add a little bit more dubbing as I get closer to the the thorax and the head. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. You can just start to see the tapering where there's not a lot on the thread down here and it does gradually build. I'm going to keep a little bit more in my hand in case I need to add some as I get a little bit closer. And you're going to simply apply thread about two-thirds of the way up. So I'm going to need a little bit more. And that's about where I'm going to stop. Next, I'm going to advance my crystal flesh. Again, this is my ribbing. That first, that first um, turn, typically you'll see your tail fibers move, which tells you you started it in the right position. I'm going to make it so you can see about three or four ribs. Before you tie off, you may want to just look at your fly the whole way around to make sure they're spaced out correctly. Once they are, you only need a couple wraps to lock that in place. Trim it away. Alright, the next piece is what one of the critical pieces of this fly. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna go back to my Hungarian partridge skin and grab another one of those fibers from that darker section. When I grab one of these feathers this time, I'm going to strip down one side of the of the of the um, the stem. 
So this is the outer part of the bird that's facing the camera, and I stripped away that looking at, I guess if it's looking facing me, my left side, as it's facing you now, it's your left as well. Then I'm going to hold on to the, the little tip section and pull out, not pull out, but just pull away some of the fibers, creating a little gap in there. You can just see this gap starting right there. And that's going to be my tie-in spot on this fly. I'm going to tie in there, trim away this excess tip, and then I'm going to make two winds around the, the hook shank. No more than that. I believe less is more when it comes to these legs. Okay, so I'm placing this partridge fiber on top. I have that tip section splayed out. I'm going to make a couple wraps. I'll show you what that looks like. So here's that tip section I was talking about a second ago. I might trim that away. I can leave my thread right where it is. If you have, if you want to use hackle pliers, you can. Otherwise, I've left the stem. I've just pulled all the fibers off of it. I can simply grab the stem. As I make my wraps, I'm going to use my outer hand to pull those fibers back. So I want to keep them going back. That's one turn. Here's my second turn. As I complete it, I'm going to bring my thread around. I'm just going to wave it back and forth so I don't walk too many of those fibers under my thread. Then I'm going to make one wrap in front just to clear my thread. I'm going to find the stem of this hackle, trim it. You will see some extra fibers hanging around. Just pull some of those out of there. All right, next, this is one of, well, this is what I, I believe a critical piece. I'm going to take these fibers and pull them back, and then I'm going to wind my thread back and just ensure they're all locked going in a back, we'll say a back position. Now they're all locked going back. The one thing I may do is twist them around just to make sure that they're even around the shank. All right, perfect. Once I have those all, all spread out, I'm just going to come back, grab a couple pieces of, hack, of uh, peacock. Once I have two pieces of, of peacock, I'm going to make sure they're, their tips are lined up for the, for the most part. I'm just going to trim them. I want to start with some decent looking peacock. I'm going to keep their tips together. Tie them in by the tips. Again, just tie back. So I, I bring the, that peacock the whole way back to the, um, the legs. Wrap forward. Okay, now I'm going to bring my peacock forward. Looks like I may have trapped a partridge fiber in there. Let me get that guy out of there. Here we go. I have about four turns of peacock in there. I'll just make a couple finishing wraps. Put in a half hitch. I'm going to whip finish with my peacock in there so I can trim both my thread and those peacock fibers in the same swoop. All right, now I'm going to just take a quick peek at my fly and examine the finished birds of prey caddis. I have these uh, Hungarian partridge fibers splayed out really nice, which are representing the legs of this pattern. I have my tail, which has some great modeling in it. As I turn this, you can see the colors just shooting off that crystal flash ribbing. This is a darker birds of prey caddis, and then I have that really nice peacock head. Peacock is just that, that all-purpose material that you want to have on every pattern. So that was a look at the tying this um, John Anderson Birds of Prey Caddis. That was the, the dark brown one. Here is a tan colored one. Um, just an awesome, really effective caddis pupa and a merger. Um, I did vary it a little bit by putting on that Crystal Flash versus the Pearl Flashaboo, and you're more than welcome to vary it too. Some instances I will actually go back through with Velcro, and I'll pull out some of that dubbing inside there. And if other times you want to add a little bit of Antron to the dubbing, go right ahead, because you'll really bring out a few more colors in this pattern. Uh, thanks go out to Allen Fly Fishing for use of this N204BL hook. You can find those at www.allenflyfishing.com. 
And thank you for all the uh, comments and questions you leave on these YouTube tutorial pages. If you have any, feel free to leave them. Otherwise, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody, for viewing this fly tying tutorial of the Anderson's Birds of Prey Caddis.